Hello everyone, welcome back to more How to Date a Magical Girl Part 13. I stayed inside today. I locked myself in my room. I can't even bring myself to eat because if you remember in the last episode, the magic uh, instructor was murdered because she used to be a member of the Cult of Nine, which we believe is behind the murders. They kill magical girls, they steal their powers. So she was asking some questions and, you know, she had to be silenced. Miss Yoshida is still crucified on the wall. I awakened a text message from Noriko. Hey, I heard about what happened at your school. I'm really sorry to hear about it. I'd like to meet up with you and talk if you have the energy for me. Please let me know. Now, first, I can't bring myself to reply. Meeting up with Noriko will mean having to leave my room and having to talk about Miss Yoshida's death. I decided to ignore the message for now. Oh. oh. Hmm. I awaken today to a growling stomach. I realize I haven't eaten in two days. I hope she's been managing to feed himself because I can't constantly hear him chomping on food. But aside from those sounds, I haven't heard from him. He seems to sense when I'm not feeling well and does his best to stay out of my way. I make myself some breakfast this morning and as I'm doing so I get another text from Noriko. I never heard back from you. I'm sorry for being pushy, but there's something I really need to talk to you about. I can come to you if you want. Text me your address and I'll come over. I mean, what could she possibly need? If she wants to comfort me about the murder, it can wait. But I suppose if she comes here, it saves me some trouble. I send her my address and sit down to eat. I bet she has information about the murders. Or the cult, anyway. A short while later, the doorbell rings. Hey, I hope I'm not interrupting anything. Nah, you're good. I know the murders at your school must be really hard on you. I can't imagine what an effect it's having on your school life. But what I'm here to talk about is kind of selfish. I hope you forgive me. Oh, you're not here to discuss, Miss Yoshida? Miss Yoshida, wait, was it a teacher who was killed this time? Yeah, our practical magic teacher. Oh, that's horrible. I knew there was another murder, but I automatically assumed it was another student. I'm so sorry, Alan. But if you'll pardon me, the reason I'm here is unrelated. Okay, what did you want to talk about? I... I'll be going away for a while. I'm afraid we won't be able to see each other for quite some time. You're going... where? Overseas, I suppose. For work? Something like that. Something came up that I can no longer avoid facing. How long will you be gone? I can't say for sure. I'm sorry. I know we've become good friends and now I feel like I'm abandoning you. We can still talk on the phone, right? It's best that we don't. Ah, well, I think I see. You've met someone, haven't you? Hmm. Well, you didn't deny it. Anyway, I should be off. I just really want to tell you in person and see you one last time. Noriko, one more thing. You should leave that school. It's so dangerous. Three murders in just a few short months? Get out of there, Alan. Look for another academy to attend. I can't leave. My friends are there. I have to go. Goodbye, Alan. All right, go. Well, that sucks. No more Noriko. But yeah, it does look like she met somebody. We'll be paying our respects to Miss Yoshida with memorial service in this afternoon. I hope you'll be able to attend. The normal bustling classroom is quiet this morning. Only half of our class's students are in attendance. All the gossip and rumors are swirling around like a hurricane last week have vanished. The students are far too afraid to continue their hush whispering. I know a lot of your classmates have left the academy for good. It's unfortunate, but unavoidable considering the circumstances. Th to those of you staying with us, please accept my heartfelt thanks, and I promise to get to the bottom of this. In the meantime, I will be taking over practical magic class until a suitable replacement teacher is found. I look forward to continuing to teach you all. I'm surprised to see Rhea walk in the hallway today. I thought for sure that she would be taking more time off after the death of her aunt. Ray. Oh, hey. Are you feeling well enough to be here? 
Oh, no, not exactly, but, you know, what else am I gonna do? Hey, could we talk? I found out something about your aunt from Miss Otsuka. Uh, I think I know what you're talking about. Alright. Let's go up to the roof, then. So, what did Miss Otsuka tell you? She mentioned that your aunt, Miss Yoshida, used to be a member of the Cult of Nine a long time ago. Did you know that, Ray? Yeah, I know. And she only ever told a few of her close family members and some teachers, too, it sounds like. The thing is, she left the cult such a long time ago. So she was safe. But, but... I asked her to investigate their murders. I asked her to talk to her contacts to find out what the hell's going on. And that must have led to her being killed. It's all my fault. I wouldn't have gotten involved if I didn't press her. Ray, you can't blame yourself. You didn't know. Yeah, I can. It's absolutely because of me. Aya would have stayed out of it, but I kept pushing and pushing. So I need to make amends. I need to fix what happened. What will you do? I'm going to find the cult and I'm going to kill them all. Ray. They've been murdering students and draining their powers or whatever, and now they murdered a member of my own family. I'm going to make them pay every single one of them. Ray, you're talking about killing people just like they do. It's not the same. They started this if I fight back as self-defense, right? Or do we just sit here and wait? Do we just wait and hope we're not next? Fuck that. Fuck living in fear. I'm going to fight back. You don't need to be involved, but I'm going to take them all down. For the students here. For Aya. Razor's all is strong. It's radiant, almost blinding. I tell she isn't going to let this go. And somehow, somehow she's convinced me to help her. Ray, I'm with you. I'll help you out. I can't do much yet. But let me train with you. Let's get stronger together. Ha! Now you're talking. Thanks, Alan. I knew I could count on you. If we can get it to Mimi and the others to join us, we'll be unstoppable. We can put an end to the Cult of Nine. Ray holds her hand out and I grab it firmly. We shake and our pact is formed. We're going to destroy the Cult of Nine. We've let ourselves become victims long enough. Time to fight back. Damn right it is. Finally, we're not just resting on our laurels. We're gonna go kick some ass. Oh, it's easily. I haven't seen her much. As a whole, I was quite happy with your exam results from last term. Of course, there is always room for improvement. I want to take some time to go over the earlier content from this year. I feel my phone buzz gently in my pocket. Unknown number. Don't go after the cult. Leave the school. It's an unknown number. I try to reply, but the message bounces back. Don't go after the cult. Leave the school. Did someone witness Ray and I vowing to take the cult down? Is someone spying on us? I take a worried look around the classroom, and all I see are bored students. How bizarre. Right, we need to train them so we can take the cult on in a fair fight. <clears throat> well, they're not gonna fight fair. Why should we? Got it. Hey, you can only transform, right? Yep. I don't think I've ever seen your outfit. Aw, uh, really? Well, I do it now, but it takes a lot for me to focus. That's what I gotta practice. I don't wanna just practice my magic, though. I wanna be able to pummel the cult members with my fists, too, so I'll be doing lots of physical training. Sounds exhausted. Don't quit on me now, Alan. I need you. I know, I know. Don't worry, I'm with you. Good. Then let's get stuck into it. Ray and I spend the evening training. Between the two of us, we don't know where to even start with practical magic. So we do laps, do push-ups, and practice our punches. I find it pretty hard to keep up with Rhea, but at the very least, I seem to be helping her get past Ai's death. That's really the best we can do right now. So I'll keep up the training. Yeah. Hey, Hoshi. Ah, oh, we can finally do stuff now. Okay. Uh, oh, Yui's gonna be at the library. Oh uh, man, we need 10 more percent. Let's go see Yui. Wait, how are we on our book? I don't think we finished it. Classes continue. Ray and I use our lunch break to practice some fighting techniques. Okay, fair enough. Oh, it's raining. Oh, this is a good time to do um uh, our stats, but I think we're okay on stats. So we got to go to the library. Did we finish our book? I don't know. Turn a book. I want to borrow another book. 
Okay. Uh, do we have any gifts? No, we don't. Well, we'll just talk with her, I guess. Yeah, I know. We're close. We're so close. We are so close. One. Man, that sucks. Uh, actually, hang on. Let's not read it. Let's go see. Let's go see Yui again. No, not that. There we go. She's at the forest, right? Wish affection got raised more in the rain too. That'd be nice. Okay, we gotta buy gifts. Probably buy some more snack foods and stuff. I got gifts, but I can't give them to her. I'm annoyed. Another boring day classes. You know, it's kind of eerie attending school now that so many students have quit. Makes you wonder about the ones who haven't quit. Do their parents just not care? Like, oh, three murders. It's all right, huh? <laughs> it's all right, honey. <laughs> when I was your age, uh, there was at least five in the first semester alone. You'll be fine. Ray and I use our lunch break to run laps around the school. Oh, it's raining again. Oh, hey, yeah, we could check. I think the calendar has the weather on it. Okay, she's not even available today. So this is a good time to go working. First, let's see how much money we got. Wait, actually, no, we're not going here because we can't really buy anything for it anymore. So we're just going to get her food. Shop. Um, she can have a pizza. No, she can't have pizza. She can have this thing. Man, am I that broke? Holy crap. Well, you know what? We gotta earn some cash. Hey, how you doing? Oh, whoop. There we go. Grab my apron. Time goes by slowly. Always does. Although I had to work last night and it went by pretty quickly. Okay, now we can read the book. Read. Yeah. Two chapters left. Boy. I wonder where you gonna transform, huh? I wanna see our transformation. It's gonna be amazing. You know. The, the you know, the best flower blooms last. Ready for another day of training? I stifle yawn and nod. The physical training is taking a toll on me. But I do feel myself getting fitter. We should also tell Mimi and the others about her goal. It's probably about time. Wait, we haven't told them yet? You think they'll join us in go after going the cult? Hmm, I think so. Mimi knows that once I get my mindset on something, it's impossible to give it to me otherwise. It'll be easier for her just to go with it. Okay, good. I'll try to convince Akari and Yui too. Got it. Leave Kaori to me. She might be tough to convince. Yeah, don't get your hopes up too much with her. Haha, <laughs> well, I'll see you after class. I'd like you all to go through the next chapter of the textbook on your own. If you have any difficulty, please just ask me. I heave a sign open my textbook. I can tell the next few hours are just gonna drag on. As I'm reading, I felt my phone buzz in my pocket. I stopped to try to look at the message without tell me noticing. Get out of the school now. Huh? It's from that unknown number again. I send a friend to reply asking who is sending the text messages, but once again, my text bounces back and I can't be sent. I take a look around the classroom. Everyone else is either staring at their books or dozing off. The car is to my left taking notes. You is to my right, flipping through a textbook. No one in the class could have sent this message. Get out of school now. Who sent this? An ear piercing scream shreds the silence in the classroom. I jump out of my seat and fright. It sounded like it came from outside in the hallway. What was that? A scream? The other students jump up in a panic. So I claps her hands, trying to get everyone's attention. Everybody, please wait here. I'll go see what that was. She hurries out of the room, and her car and I exchange a worried glance. A second scream resounds throughout the school. It gets cut short at its climax and is interrupted by a disgusting gurgling sound. One of her classmates rushes to the door and throws it open. She shrieks and then recoils back into the class. Someone was blocking the door. They enter. Well, 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 what do we have here? A classroom full of diligent, hardworking students. My order says I should drain your magical powers, but to do that, you all need to be dead, okay? Okay! Let's get this started! Oh no. No, no, no. Drain our magical powers? Could this be? Could this be a member of the Cult of Nine? I'll do something. What can I do? If you could all just line up against that wall, this will be so much easier. Yui, you can kick this woman's ass, right? You've got, you're stronger than any of us. I'll do my best. 
Poison Shadow Transformation. Your transformation is light and quick. She has truly mastered her power. She raises both hands in the end and swings them down with force. Dusk Fall. Huh? The cult member is startled by Yui's sudden attack. She leaps to the side, narrowly and avoiding Yui's spell. The circular section of the ceiling comes crashing down in the exact spot she stood just a second ago. I missed. Haha, <laughs> we have a feisty one. There's no point in resisting. Be bound. The cultist clicks her fingers and glowing green shackles appear on Yui's wrists. They tighten and pull her hands together like a pair of ethereal handcuffs. Oh no! Damn, what now? Alan, try to get those shackles off Yui. I'll make a distraction. Akari, be careful. I can do this. Yes, I can do this. Focus. Shooting star transformation. I did it! Another one of you wants to fight me? I was told this class was full of first years. How can you transform? Take this! Blinding glow! Ikari's palm is raised at the cultist and a strong blue light flashes forth in a beam. What the hell? I can't see anything! Damn it! Yes, it worked! Nice one, Ikari. How'd you learn to do that? <laughs> it's not technically combat magic. I just directed a super bright light straight in her eyes. Not bad, huh? You did good. I saw to remember I'm supposed to be helping Yui out of her binding, so I turned to her. I grabbed the glowing green shackles I immediately feel my flesh begin to burn. I'm tight! Oh no, Alan, are you okay? Yeah, the shackles blistered my hands. I smell burning flesh. Ah, oh, how inspirational. I don't need to see in order to cut you all down. Spectral Scythe. The cult that swings her arms in a wide horizontal arc. The sparkling green light trail trails behind her hands, slicing dust and chairs in half. <laughs> she cackles insanely, stumbles forward, slashing through the air repetitively with her magical energy. Get down! The car, you and I all hit the ground, just as the stoop in front of us is sliced clean in half. A cascade of blood arcs in the air like a macabre rainbow. The student's upper body hits the floor with a sickening thud. Her disembodied legs are still standing, twitching and spraying blood in every direction. Holy hell! You're gonna be sick. <laughs> I smell blood! It's, I taste it! Blood! More! A cacophony of screams and cries erupt from the other students in the room as the cultist approaches them. We need to get Yui out of the shackles. She's the only one strong enough to fight. I've got an idea. Yui, hold your arms forward. The card holds her hand over the shackles, taking care not to touch them. Cooling breeze. The card's gentle spell generates a small calming wind. It rapidly cools down the scorching hot shackles, causing the eerie glow to fade away. Within a few seconds, the shackles crack and fall apart. Wow, thanks, Akari. No problem. I just thought that if they're super hot, cooling them down might cause them to break apart, and it worked. That's using your head. Now we need to get up and do something. Leave it to me. We climb up from the ground, being extra careful not to stand in the pool of blood filling from our poor classmate's corpse. Who wants to be cut up next? The cultist has the other students backed into a corner. She's looming over them like a rabid beast. You're not killing anyone else. The cultist turns to face you. I can tell by the glint in her eyes that she's no longer suffering from the blindness the car inflicted on her. You escaped from my shackles. How intriguing. Then prepare for round two. Never! Yui dashes forward and makes an acrobatic leap on top of a desk. She uses the desk as a launch pad and pounces straight up into the air before swinging her arm forward and shooting a stream of purple arrows from her fingertips. The cultist frantically dodges left and right, but one of the mystical arrows pierces her shoulder. Ah! Uh, you dare inflict pain on me? No one makes me bleed my own blood. She shrieks like a banshee and crash ta tackles Yui to the floor. Yui! Now on top of Yui, the cultist unleashes a flurry of fists in Yui's face. I see a spot of blood spray from Yui's nose like a fountain. The stray tooth spins across the ground and stops at my feet. Get off of her! Without thinking, I rush forward and throw myself at the cultist. I manage to grab her and tear away from Yui. We collapse in a heap on the ground. Get your hands off me! Yui rises from the floor, her legs shaking. Crimson ichor flows freely from her nose and mouth. Hold her there. I realize she's commanding me and I do my best to pin the struggling cultist down. Tormented nightmare. Yui's arms raise up and she lowers it slowly. The cultist's eyes close lazily and she stops resisting. She slumps, completely unconscious. 
I managed to untangle myself from her sleeping body and get back on my feet. Huey, are you okay? I'm fine. Let me help you. Stay still. The cry comes over and lays a soft hand on you, cheek. Heavenly restoration. A brilliant blue aura emanates from Hikari's hand. Once the light fades, Hikari removes her hand from Yui's face. There, is that better? Ah, Yui gingerly touches her face, expecting to be in pain. But her broken nose is fixed and her missing tooth has been restored. Not a trace of blood remains on her delicate features. Hikari, thank you. Hikari beams, obviously glad to be of assistance. When I turn to look around the classroom, I see our slain classmate in a line in a pool of blood, her body completely cut in half. The other students are still cowering against the wall, sobbing quietly. It seems we escaped the situation with just one fatality. My mind races back to when this began. We all heard screams outside the classroom, and so tell me Rain to investigate. That means ours wasn't the only class to be attacked. It's not over yet. Other classes have been attacked as well. We need to help as many people as we can. You and Akari nod. They're both wearing a determined expression. What do we do with this one? She lets out a little kick at the coldest line face down on the floor. She'll be unconscious for hours. I wouldn't worry about her right now. Okay, then let's go. We tear open the classroom door and run through the corridor. I look into every classroom we pass, but many of them are empty. We race down hallway after hallway until... Ah, you're all safe. <sighs> We're worried about you. Oh, Miu, Kyo, are you two okay? Yes, we just met up. Both of our classes were attacked by people I can only assume belong to the Cult of Nine. Same situation here. Have you seen Rhea? No. I searched her classroom, but no one was there. Where'd she get to? Shut up about Rhea for a second. There's something, there's something else in the school. Huh? There's some sort of demon bitch chasing students. I only caught a glimpse of it, but it was completely fucked up. What are you talking about? Oh, <laughs> pretty, pretty girls. What the f- It's a face demon. Pretty pretty girls lined up in a row. Pretty pretty girls join those down below. Oh my god, what the hell is that? That's the bitch. I saw it. I saw it eating another student. Eating a student? Everyone step back. Sizzling serpent. Mew watches a stream of fire at the mass demon. <laughs> warm warm fire tempers my resolve. The flames hit the demon directly, but they simply fizzle out and disappear. What? No effect. Gonna take this. Kiwi claws at the demon, but it shimmers and disappears in an instant. Kiwi tumbles into a student locker and lets out a whimper. Oh, <laughs> nimble, nimble kitty, she hastens your defeat. What do we do? How do we hit this thing? Let me try. Dusk fall. Ooh, dark, dark despair cannot crush the soul that does not exist. As expected, Yui's spell has little effect against the demon. We can't hurt it. Let's retreat and regroup. Kiyoi shouts at us from behind the demon. If we let it go, it's going to continue eating people. Delicate little girls lined up so nice. Delicate little girls. I think I'll take a bite. We step back away from the encroaching demon. The door to the side suddenly swings open and a figure sprints out. <sighs> there you are! Rhea! Rhea nods at Mia and swings around to face the masked demon. There you are, you creepy bitch! I saw you eating that second year student. Did you think you could run away from the academy's fastest student? Ho <laughs> ho! Brutish little girl. All brawn and muscle. Brutish little girl. No magic and no brains. Oh, what? We ain't rhyming. I'll show you. I'm sick of not being able to protect the people I care about. I'm supposed to be a magical girl, but I'm always so powerless. Well, not anymore. I've been training. Training every day, just so I can turn evil fuckers like you into punching bags. I don't know if you're here with the cultists, or you're just some demon to come prey on the weak. But I'm going to end you right here now. Ballistic Bunny Transformation. That looks cool. I like that. A shower of turquoise sparkles explode and reveal Rhea in her magical outfit. She's wearing a frilly miniskirt, striped stockings, and knee-high boots. Her toned physique is on display thanks to her crop tiny crop top. Steel knuckle gloves adorn her arms, and a bunch of angry bunny mascots decorate her entire outfit. Her entire outfit is a blend of cute and badass, and it's not exactly what I expected from her. <laughs> this transforming thing really does get easier and easier. Get ready for a beatdown, you freak. 
<laughs> Brutish little girl all bark and no bite. Bite this. Ray leaps forward and unleashes a powerful roundhouse kick. The mass demon takes full impact in stride, flinching only a little. Ray follows up with a second kick, then pummels her fists against the mask. A hairline crack begins to form in the demon's mask. Oh, <laughs> brutish little girl somehow cracks my mask. That's not all I'm gonna crack. Ray leaps up and over the demon. She launches a devastating sidekick into the backside of her foe. The mass demon is thrown off balance, it screeches, and Ray bounces back over to us. Ha! Huh, there's plenty more where that came from. <laughs> Tired of this I grow, feeding time is near. The demon's mask peels up, revealing a much wider and horrifying mouth below. Disturbingly, the screaming disembodied heads of parish students appear within the tangled mess of the demon's hair. Oh, what the fuck? They're the students that were eaten earlier. Oh god. Cower in fear, you stupid girl! You will be consumed and added to my collection. The demon springs forward and gnashes his teeth at Rhea. Rhea effortlessly leaps aside and counters attack with her elbow, dropping it down like a sledgehammer on the demon's face. Urgh. Rhea, finish it off! Roger that. The demon rises up high in the air, levitating over Rhea. It opens its mouth unnaturally wide, preparing to chomp down and consume Rhea whole. Rhea saves herself in anticipation. The demon comes crashing down, madly snapping its jaws and sending spittle flying everywhere. I've been practicing, training, getting stronger. A stupid thing like you ain't gonna stop me. Ballistic Blitz. Rhea throws a blistering fast punch directly upwards, slashing into the demon. But that's not the end of it. Rhea follows up with a hundred more punches, firing rapidly like a Gatling gun. The sheer speed she's able to deliver her fist of justice is astounding. Surely this is some sort of magical ultimate ability. The demon's face is battered, bruised, broken. <laughs> it drops to the ground, face down, a mangy mess of hair and blood. <sighs> Suck on that. Ray, you did it. Oh, I'm actually impressed. Whew, now that was a workout. Look, the other students are all running outside. I should have glanced out the window. Sure enough, a bunch of people are gathering outside. Shall we go over? They might need our help. Let's do it. If there are any more demons, I'll give them hell. We all head outside. Two women are facing off against each other. I instantly recognize the first. Oh. Satomi is standing confidently, hand on her hip. She has almost a cocky smile on her face, like she knows what's gonna happen next. The woman she faces off against is carrying a magic sword. She's wearing a cape and hood reminiscent of Little Red Riding Hood, with a skin-tight leotard underneath. Not like Little Red Riding Hood. Her face is masked, completely concealing her identity. I'm surprised you attacked the school in broad daylight. A bold move, if I must say. You think so? To be honest, I didn't expect this much resistance. It would seem your students have been training hard. Well, of course. After the demon summoning incident, we've all worked hard. That was you, wasn't it? You summoned the demon at the start of the school year. Oh, who knows? It matters a little anyway. The Cult of Nine will claim this academy. You may step out of the way if you value your life. The Cult of Nine. So you're the leader. Perhaps. Hmm. Surprisingly, Satomi looks over to us. She notices that the girls are all in their magical outfits. Ah, it would seem my students have cleaned up much of the school. Your monsters and lackeys have been taken care of. Then I'll take my leave. But first, I'll take one more life. With shocking speed, the cult leader sleeps at Satomi brandishing her sword. No, Miss Atsuka! Without thinking, without even noticing my body propelling itself forward, I dive in front of Satomi! I hear the piercing sound of sword ripping through flesh. But I don't feel pain. I feel calm. Although everything is black and silent and cold, I feel calm. I don't feel my body hit the ground, but I know what happened. I don't hear Hikari screaming my name, but I know what happened. 
I don't feel the world around me anymore, but I know it's there. I don't feel myself slipping into unconsciousness, but I, 